Today's episode is brought to you by Forvis Mazars. Sound Cartel. From Sound Cartel, I'm Nicole Goodman, and this is Business Essentials Daily. Nobody expects to go to work and face the threat of sexual harassment. Well, now it's a legal requirement that employers take reasonable steps to ensure it doesn't happen. On March 6, 2023, the Fair Work Act was amended to prohibit sexual harassment in connection with work, including in the workplace. Jan Flagel is Associate Director of HR Advisory at Forvis Mazars, and he explains what reasonable steps employers are expected to take shortly. First, a national inquiry provided by the Australian Human Rights Commission looked at the state of sexual harassment in the workplace. Jan shares the findings from the inquiry with Chris Ashmore. Almost two in five women and one in four men have been sexually harassed in the workplace in the past five years. That statistics alone speaks volume as to how far we are from having solved the problem. So the prevention, the management of sexual harassment has always been there, but now it's really is something that is demonstrated as we mean business, we're going to get onto you. If you're not doing everything you can to prevent this from happening, we'll be there. That means they have the power to investigate, to go to workplaces and address the issue with not only individuals, but also with employers if they are found to be vicariously liable. That means they would have not taken all reasonable steps. Right. Well, I understand that you're quite focused on this area. Why is it resonating, do you think, with your medium-sized business clients? What is interesting here is that when you just take a step back and look at two days ago, the ABC News just talking about 25 women that have been killed or lost their lives to sexual violence or gender-based violence. It shows that we're not there. We're not there. We're making progress. But as a nation, it's not good enough. And what is really important is to understand that it's not about big companies. It's about every company. The obligations are the same for all companies. But the reality is that as a small business or as a medium-sized business, what do you put on there all reasonable steps? Or if you look at the OHNS Act, reasonably practicable. What does that mean in a sense? So, so what is interesting is that you need to look at it from a perspective of at my level, with my budget, with my resources and my time, have I taken all reasonable steps? So that's what really it means. And the reason why it, it resonates for medium-sized businesses is that they have the same legal obligations. So it's very important to understand that it's not just the big companies that have that legal obligation. Every employer has got that legal obligation because every human life counts. That's as simple as that. Do you have any examples of the real costs and risks you've helped your clients avoid or manage? What is interesting is that you look at, for instance, the dimension of training. So training of staff and training of managers and the executive teams. And when I compare the cost and the time that I spend training 40 or 50 people at once versus the time that I spend to investigate sexual harassment that is basically relating to a perpetrator, alleged perpetrator, an alleged victim, and a couple of witnesses, you, you're going to spend about five or six times the amount. Just purely, if you look at the financial aspect, it's five or six times the amount to investigate the wrongdoing rather than the time spent to try and prevent it. And that is a very important thing to take into consideration. But also the fact that from an employer point of view, the vicarious liability will always be there. If you've not done everything, and again, that simple thing such as review your policies, make sure that they're up to date, make sure that every employee has read them. It's not a paperwork exercise. Your policies are the things that you enforce. They are your rules. So you want to make sure that your employees have read them and they acknowledge that they have read them. So make these changes, then make sure that you train your staff. These are the things that will make a difference. That means that people 
not only need to be trained on what the law tells us. It's not just about the what and the why. That is very important. But it's also the how. How do you address these things? How do you prevent? How do I respond if I'm sexually harassed? How do I respond if I hear it or witness it? And what do I do if I'm accused? All these things that form part of the obligations that everyone has got to meet. You know, Forbes Mazars has been a long-time supporter of Sound Cartel, and now they're helping us bring you this podcast. Find out how audit, tax and advisory firm Forbes Mazars can support your business. That's F-O-R-V-I-S-M-A-Z-A-R-S dot com slash A-U. Employers are expected to take reasonable steps to ensure that harassment doesn't occur in the workplace. What is considered reasonable? Yeah, that's an interesting one. And again, uh, the only caveat is that I always say, we can't keep your head out of water. And if you don't do the, the bare minimum that is required, you will be on the water. But we don't have the certainty yet that you've taken all reasonable steps because it's not been tested in court. But first, make sure that you are running a risk assessment. If you send staff to clients, I don't know, construction sites or any places, meeting with clients, then they're obviously at a risk that is potentially outside of your control. So what are the things you put in place to make sure that they are safe? That's the sort of little things that make a big difference. How often when salespeople come back from having met with clients, the only question is, so what have you sold? Did it go well? But what is forgotten to ask is, Anything, client is okay, is that a good person? Is that or, or good to deal with? And, and these are the sort of questions that you don't want to forget anymore because they form part of that all reasonable steps. Do you think there is a change underway, though, in workplace culture across the country in respect to this? And also, how will we know when we're successful with this change? Yes, there is. There is a shift, definitely. I think that what is interesting is that you're looking at a culture that has been in place for decades where the casual sexism was a thing. And now some people, it's quite ingrained in them so that it falls into the unconscious bias. They don't even realize they're doing it, but it's not okay. It was never okay in the first place, but now it's made very clear to people that it's not okay. And there is a shift of culture And I would say that, yes, it is awkward. Sometimes we don't know how to behave anymore, but embrace the awkwardness. It's okay. It's all right, because at least we're making a right move and in the right direction. Eventually, the culture will evolve and we will be very comfortable with how we behave around people. But at the moment, if you feel awkward, that's actually a very good thing. That means that you're aware The problem is those that are not aware and don't feel awkward. And they are the dangerous ones because they are still in the old ways and have not shifted. What I think is going to be a statement of, as a nation, that we've made a change is purely at the next national inquiry, the statistics will drop. At the end of the day, the data will tell us. It will inform us. At the moment, we can see that as a nation, Domestic violence is still a thing. It's beyond the workplace, but the workplace can be a place where we can start to make a real difference and we can enforce these positive behaviors and reject as a block any form of harmful behaviors. I think that the key is the zero tolerance. That doesn't mean that you're coming with a hammer on the fly, but you address every single thing that you believe is wrong. There's a a motto that I live by. The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. So when you walk past something that feels not right, say something, do something, call out, speak up. That's really what is going to make the difference. That was Jan Flagel, Associate Director of HR Advisory at Forvis Mazars. This episode of Business Essentials Daily is produced by the team at Sound Cartel. Thanks for listening. 
I'm Nicole Goodman. We'll bring you more Bee Daily tomorrow. Follow at BE Daily Podcast across social media and head to bedaily.com.au for more from the Business Essentials Daily Podcast. Sound Cartel. This episode was brought to you by Forvis Mazars. To find out more, visit forvismazars.com slash au. That's F-O-R-V-I-S-M-A-Z-A-R-S dot com slash au.